Dear students, our today's topic of discussion is Unit Ten of Gulmohar Reader, Coming Home to Delhi, by Madhur Jaffrey. Children, Madhur Jaffrey, now regarded by many as the world authority on Indian food, is an award-winning actress and best-selling cookery author. Her first book, An Invitation to Indian Cookery, was published in nineteen seventy three, and her TV show, Madhur Jaffrey's Indian Cookery, for the BBC, made her a household name, made her famous. She has appeared in over twenty films, including Merchant Ivory's Heat and Dust, and written over fifteen cookery books, including Madhur Jaffrey's Ultimate Curry. Bible and curry easy. Children, she is a well-known actor as well as a writer of cookbooks and an expert in Indian, Asian, and world vegetarian cuisine. Children, cuisine means style of cooking of a particular country. Some of her books have won the James Beard Foundation awards. Children, uh. This chapter, coming home to Delhi, is a personal essay about the writer's love for her home city, Delhi. It opens with the writer fondly recapturing, recalling the childhood experience of returning to the city after holidaying in hill stations. The memory includes rituals like drinking tea at a wayside station. and dropping coins into the yamuna river for luck as the train reaches delhi the city looks beautiful in the early morning mist like a mughal miniature painting delhi belongs not only to the writer but to the different lines of invaders who rules it from time to time and riching it with their architecture and cuisine the most long lasting of these is the culture of the moguls children now let's discuss the chapter in detail it is probably at dawn and dusk that delhi offers the most beautiful part of itself children in the first line the narrator says delhi looks most beautiful just before sunrise and the time just after sunset i remember as a child going away from delhi and my grandfather's house on holidays to hill station here uh, the narrator recalls the memories of returning home to delhi after holidaying on the hill stations children delhi is her hometown and the home of her ancestors too her grandparents too when we returned it was always a night journey by train means they used to return to delhi by night journey in a train my mother would shake us awake as we neared the yamuna river during night journey uh the narrator and her other uh, brother sisters they used to sleep and their mother uh, their mother uh, wake them up uh, when the train neared the yamuna river delhi lay just beyond yamuna river flocks of quacking manas and parrots would be circling the pink sky as the steam train traveled towards delhi and soon it was time for the morning tea children by these descriptions uh the narrator she describes the morning beauty of delhi she says that uh in the morning the environment of delhi is uh, so calm that a uh, chirping and squeaking of the birds could be heard tea was a simple affair brought from vendors who marched up and down up and down means moved from here to there in the train with with a large kettle chanting hot tea hot tea children if you have traveled in trains then uh, you must have seen uh, that in the train 
टी वेंडर्स दे कम विद दी टी इन दी लार्ज केटल्स एंड दे से होट टी होट टी टू सेल इट टू दी पैसेंजर्स इन द ट्रेन फर्दर दी नरेटर सेज इट वॉज सर्वड इन टेराकोटा कप्स दैट एड इट टू द शुगरी मिल्की टी a delicious flavor of their own uh here uh, she says that the tea was served in the cups made of clay baked in fire and children uh, when uh, tea is served in clay cups it gives a very appealing aroma appealing smell uh she has given the details of tea also like tea is uh milky sugary and delicious and the flavor is added to tea when it is served in the cups made of clay as soon as we had had our tea children here had had has been used two times this is past perfect tense had plus verb 3 here first had is used as a helping verb and second had is used as a finite verb my mother would pull out her purse and take from it a generous amount of coins after just after having the tea her mother used to uh, pull out some coins from her purse this was a sign that the train was about to go over the yamuna bridge each child armed with a handful of coins would choose a position by a window uh after taking coins from her purse mother would give coins to the children children uh here the narrator has uh, used a phrase armed with a handful of coins children armed means generally carrying weapons but here the author talks humorously in a funny manner she talks about the coins in the hands as weapons we would take one coin at a time and hurl it on the holy currents of yamuna children they were very excited uh, with the coins in their hands and they were ready at a position by a window to hurl to throw hurl means to throw something with great force to throw the coin uh, on to the holy currents of yamuna currents means flow of water if the coin hit the river our mother told us we would be blessed according to their mother if the coin hit the water of the river they would be blessed but if it hit a washerman beating clothes on a sandy island or the bridge then no blessing could be expected and if the coin hit the ground near the river then no blessing would be expected we would try to get our blessings as quickly as possible because the approaching city called for our full attention before uh, reaching to delhi uh, they wanted to take the, uh, the blessings by throwing the coin into yamuna river with the sun raining gold on it the domes and minarets of the 17th century mughal capital looked like they might be in a miniature painting a uh, raining gold on it means the golden sunlight of early morning falling on the old city and here minarets minaret means tall thin towers on mosques they looked like they might be in a miniature painting children uh the 17th century mughal capital refers to delhi india uh, was ruled by the mughals for a long time and delhi was the capital and miniature painting means pictures in ancient manuscripts manuscript means uh, a very old book or document that was written by hand so here by giving all these details the narrator uh, describes the Uh, beauty of old city old delhi 
This was my city, the city where I was born and the city of my ancestors. My heart invariably skipped a beat when I saw it. Children, I have already told you in the beginning of the chapter that Delhi was her hometown and her ancestors, her forefathers also lived here. And further she says, her heartbeat stopped. Children, when we are very excited, uh, our heartbeat, it, it stops for a moment uh, when we saw something which we really like. So in the same way, the narrator's heartbeat was skipped. Uh, she became very uh, excited when she saw her hometown. Delhi, India's capital city, is a combination of many Delhis. For the last thousand years, as rulers replaced each other, one Delhi was torn down to build another, often with the stones of its former self. Children, uh, as India's capital city, the narrator sees her hometown also as the home of many ancient rulers who built and rebuilt the city according to their choice. Children, here she means to say that many rulers came and ruled Delhi for many thousand years and they made changes uh, in Delhi according to their own choice, according to their own requirement. One of Delhi's conquerors in the last millennium. Children, conquerors means uh, a person who has conquered something, who has won uh, a country or its people. So, one of Delhi's conqueror in the last millennium, millennium a thousand years, the Mughals were known for their great wealth and taste. Uh, so, Mughals, they ruled over Delhi for many thousand years and uh, they were known for their wealth and taste. They built two cities of which Shahzanabad, now called the Old City, became famous throughout the ancient world as the seat of the Grand Mughal. Seat of the Grand Mughal means place from which the Mughal emperor ruled. Coming from distant places, these rulers longed for the food and climate of their home. Coming from distant places means the ruling class of Mughal Delhi had come to India from Central Asia and Persia. And uh, these rulers, they longed, they wished for the food and the climate of their home. They could do nothing about the weather. They could not change the weather of Delhi. But they built gardens, water tanks and canals. The Mughals carved marble canals that went through their palace bedrooms and they ate their own food. So children... Uh, the Mughals, they had great taste. So, when they came to Delhi to rule over it, they could not change the climate, but they uh, made many changes according to their taste. Like, they built gardens, uh, they built uh, water tanks, canals, and they carved marble canals. And um, they made uh, other changes also according to their taste and comfort. As the years went by, some of their dishes were included and accepted as part of city's local food. Persian style pulaos and combined meat and rice, samosas, pakoris and of course tea. Children, uh... While describing Delhi's past, the narrator refers to the kings in particular who built forts, palaces, canals and gardens uh, to manifest their political power and also to recreate the climate in their native land uh, that they pined for, uh, that they wished for. They also introduced their food that finally became part of the local cuisine. Cuisine means a uh, cooking style of a particular country. So, uh, the cooking style of Mughals uh, finally became the local cooking style.
now also it is available in delhi if you visit delhi you'll easily find uh pulao rice samosa pakori nowadays uh, it is delhi's local cuisine local cooking style children till here in the chapter the narrator has beautifully described the city delhi both old and new now uh, the rest of the chapter is a description of the lifestyle in narrator's ancestral home of her grandfather further she says at my grandfather's house the men in my family learned persian poetry and ate delicate kebabs uh, here she talks about what the men in the family learned they learned persian poetry and what did they eat they ate delicate kebabs the women though allowed some education were kept at home for most of the time here she says the women were allowed uh, some education but they were not allowed to go outside the home much when they played tennis when the women in the family played tennis the entire court was cleared no one was allowed to be there so that no one could see them dashing jumping about in flowing sarees and in tennis shoes when the women in the house they played tennis nobody was allowed to watch them to look at them on cold winter evenings a wood fire was lit in the drawing room where three benches stood in front of the fire here uh, she is talking about the cold winter evenings in the house so uh, a firewood was lit in the drawing room and there were three benches in front of the fire here on these benches the children about two dozen of us she wants to say uh, she had a, a very big family uh, where around two dozen children were there two dozen means around 24 children were there in the house would sit playing word games they would sit uh, in front of the fire on the benches and they would be playing word games behind the benches was a circle of sofas and a large chair it was from here that grandfather held court held court means spoke like a king to the members of his court to the members of the family who were the members of court the members of the family uh, he loved to lecture his grandchildren on delhi's history and his best opportunities came at family picnics so what did uh, grandfather love to lecture he loved to lecture uh, his grandchildren on delhi's history and uh, when was the best time to give this lecture when uh, they were at family picnics these were held in the winter or during the monsoon season in a well tended garden of a 17th century tom or a 12th century palace so children uh, here in these lines uh, the narrator tells where they used to go for picnic they used to go for picnic in well looked after well tended means well looked after well maintained gardens of 17th century or a 12th century palace these were the places where they used to go for picnics and when did they go they go during monsoon season the entire family would go on the picnic during my childhood it never occurred to me that families could come in size smaller than 30 people swelling easily to a few thousand at the mention of a wedding here uh, the narrator wants to say that uh, when she was a child she never thought of small families uh, to her uh, families less than 30 members were not possible uh, she wants to say that uh, she had a, a large family of around 30 members and swelling easily to a few thousand and people were in thousands when they were called for a wedding nowadays we have small families hardly five or six members but in ancient times the families were very large 
Preparations for the picnic would begin early in the morning. Potatoes in a hot tomato sauce, golden puris, warm moist meatballs and jars of pickles would be packed along with fruits in large baskets. Children, in these lines the narrator describes the preparations for the picnic. What type of food, variety of dishes they used to pack for the picnic? Further, she says, two cars would stand ready, gleaming in the sun. Uh, here she says, uh, all the 30 members, uh, they would go to picnic in only two cars. The art of getting 30 people into two cars had long been mastered. The first layer consisted of short ladies and teenagers. On their laps went the second layer consisting of 10 to 12 year olds. The third layer consisted of all those below the age of 10. The tall men sat in the front seat. On their laps sat the 10 to 12 year olds holding the baskets and pots that could not be stuffed into the trunk. Children, in these lines, the narrator describes her childhood in a large family with her grandfather as the head. She adds humor, she adds fun when she provides details about two cars that were packed with some six adults and 24 children as well as food for their family picnic. Her descriptions come alive by appealing to our sense of hearing, taste, sight and touch. And the car looked something like this as shown in the picture. Uh, the cars, uh, they were overcrowded because it is not possible to sit 15 members into a car. So as the narrator has described, they would sit in layers. How in the layers? Uh, they would sit in the laps of each other and in the laps of the children. Uh, the things were kept which could not be stuffed into the trunk. So this is how they managed for the picnic in two cars. Further she says, Once we reached the gardens of the Kutub Minar, the children would rush to climb the sandstone tower. While the picnic was laid out on a large cotton sheet. Once we saw all the food laid out, we would thunder down the hundreds of steps, jostling and competing to get there first. In these lines, the narrator has described uh, that after reaching their picnic destination, the children would rush to climb uh, the red rope soft yellow or red rock often used in buildings and they used to climb the tower and the picnic was laid out on a large cotton sheet. Uh, they spread a large cotton sheet to lay the food over it and once uh, the children when they found the food laid out they would thunder down they would run down the hundred steps they would run down from the tower and jostling. Jostling means pushing aside each other uh, in order to get past. So uh, they would run pushing each other in order to uh, rush towards the food and competing to get there first. The foods and places of my childhood can still be found in Delhi. Here she says, uh, the food which she enjoyed in her childhood and the places where she visited in her childhood uh, can be seen today also in Delhi. Mornings still, still start in a haze. Haze means smoke, dust or mist in the air. In the morning uh, in Delhi, when you get up, you will find smoke, dust and mist in the air. Uh, of familiar smoke sent skyward by millions of stoves and cookers. Uh, in those early hours, potatoes and peas are combined with ginger, turmeric and green chilies. So she says in the morning in Delhi, the food is being prepared in almost all the houses 
and the smoke the family smoke it can be seen uh, going skyward whenever uh, food is prepared uh, some smoke or steam comes out of it that goes upward and uh, um, chapatis are cooked over hot fires buttered and stacked with the vegetables and a piece of mango pickle in a tiffin carrier to be carried by many people on their way to schools and offices so here she says in the morning breakfast is being prepared and tiffins are packed uh, for the school going children and for the people who go to offices just as i did on my way to school in delhi so here she recalls her childhood when she was a child and she used to uh, take her tiffin to school in the same way so children uh, at the end we come to know that the writer is able to bring to life the experience she had in the city of her birth she seems to be almost experiencing every bit of her past it is evident that every experience of hers had been so memorable that she is able to recall them this shows that the writer's childhood had been very eventful and full of fun to remember something of the past that experience has to be very memorable children i hope you have understood the chapter well uh, read the chapter thoroughly from the book and uh, listen to the explanation for better understanding thank you